This is a 1982 Honda CB450T, also sold under the moniker of the Honda Hawk. Uh, it's a fairly uncommon bike in the United States. They only sold them for one year, 1982 being the only year. It's a 450 twin, made it to a six speed uh, transmission, which in the early 80s wasn't terribly common. Uh, they restyled it from the earlier models to actually closer resemble the, the 750X. Uh, this one was actually given to me by a friend of mine. Thank you very much, Matt. He's done with his riding days and wanted it to go to a good home, and I absolutely adore 80s bikes. Uh, I want to return this one to its original stock form. Have to find, clean up these side pedals, find a new tail cowl. Uh, I have a lot of takeoff parts off the CB750s that I have. I'm gonna try to see if those fit. I'm pretty sure the blinkers are the same. I have a different set of bars off the CB750s that'll fit on there. I don't know if the tail cowl is the same. We're gonna try it out. But uh, yeah, we're gonna restore this one to its original, original shape. Like I said, they're a fairly uncommon bike. You don't see a terrible amount of them. It's been sitting for the last couple of years. So today we're gonna to do battery, oil. It's gonna need two tires. The front tire's completely flat. The brakes are pretty much locked up. Uh, there's zero pressure in the front master cylinder. We might have to rebuild that. Really haven't dug into it all that much. Change the fuel out. I'm sure the carbs are gonna need cleaning. He had mentioned that the floats and the needle valves are sticking. It's just dumping fuel. So we're gonna go through all of that and hopefully get it running by the end of the day. Seeing that this does have a center stand, we're gonna see if we can rock it up on there uh, with the tires flat, make it a little bit easier to work on. All right. First thing we'll do is change the oil on it. So this particular bike takes a 17 millimeter and then a 12 millimeter for the oil filter. The oil filter is a cartridge style instead of a standalone unit, including gaskets. I was lucky enough that my local store happened to have one in stock and I mean, they had one. Let's see how bad this oil looks. That's not too stuck on, which is nice. Broke right free. That's not that bad, actually. Definitely used. Pretty amber color. Not seeing any sparkles or sediment in it, which is nice. Pierre said it was fairly nicely maintained. The filter assembly sits right here. He's in a 12 millimeter. Bolts. This is holding. Definitely holding a bit of oil. Let that drain for a second. Not sure if that's dirt or old gasket material. Looks like somebody made the gasket last time. Hopefully it's not a bunch of silicone we gotta clean up. Right, there we go. Definitely fairly dirty <clears throat> filter. Spring. It does appear as though somebody made the gasket last time out of silicone, so we're gonna have to clean that up. Let's see how bad it is underneath here. Not too bad, actually. It's 
some RTV there. We'll just spray a little brake clean on there to clean it all up. Doesn't look like it adhered all that well, actually. Fairly flat, oily surface. Which is a bonus for us. Less to clean up. Well, unfortunately, one of the previous owners made a gasket out of silicone. Well, it's not the worst thing in the world. It definitely complicates the process a little bit. So we're gonna have to clean that out with a razor blade while inspecting it further. I also found they used it on the bolt as well. Um, I don't really recommend that. If this breaks down and gets caught up in your oil filtration system or blocks one of the passages, not gonna be great for the bike. Definitely recommend using the OEM rubber gaskets and washers. So we're gonna clean that up and get the correct stuff on, put it back together and get the oil back into it. I'm using Honda GN4, it's 10W30. I don't remember the exact uh, quantity. I think it calls for two and a half liters, but we'll double check that. I'll let you know and we'll get it put in the bike. Well, adding to a little bit of fuckery, they actually used the old gasket, covered it in silicone and then put it back in place. Uh, you can see it just, it's coming right off. The old gaskets are really, really rock hard. They have almost no stretch left in them. Uh, so definitely glad I replaced those. Here is the completed filter assembly. Filter underneath that. We have our filter spring goes underneath the filter. That just keeps tension on it. Put that all together. There's an O-ring in here. They do not come pre-lubricated. Make sure you put a little bit of oil on it. There's also a small O-ring on the actual bolt that you need to make sure you change or else you will have uh, weepage. Again, they don't come lubricated. Make sure you throw a little oil on them to uh, soften them up and make sure that they don't leak. All right, let's get this back installed, throw the drain plug back in, and we'll pop some oil in. So this filter assembly is a little different. This bike, like on the CB750s, they mount right on the front. Uh, with the 450T, it actually has a built-in uh, oil cooler. Air to oil cooler right there. I'm just gonna clean up this mating surface real quick. The way this housing is shaped, it can only go in one way. It sits just like that. I'm just gonna snug this down for right now. Not gonna go too hard on it. Gotta get the proper foot pounds to uh, crank that down. I don't think it's gonna be too many. And I really don't wanna strip that out. Same with the drain plug. Now it is important to switch out the crush washer. However, I don't have one and in a pinch, you can reuse them, but you might get some leakage. And again, just gonna snug that down, not too hard. We'll get the proper torque settings on those. So torque spec on this oil filter housing is 12 foot pounds. Give just a little bit. And on the drain bolt, we're getting 20 foot pounds. Okay. That's all torqued down. Let's fill it with oil. So looking this up, I got a lot of different answers on how much oil this thing is supposed to take when you change the filter as well. But, Unlike many of the newer bikes with 
sight glasses, this actually has a dipstick. So we're able to add a little bit of oil and check. So we're gonna start with two quarts. Uh, I expect it's gonna take closer to three, maybe start with two and a half. And then check it. I expected to read a little over pull um, before running it and everything like that because obviously the oil is not going to be in all the passages. So we got a filter, got a funnel here. And again, we're using 10W30. This is Pro Honda GN4 oil. Two and a half in there. Let's see what this is. Definitely reading over full there. Right about a half a quart. Yeah, just a little full. That's okay, that's to be expected before I run the oil around. That being said, we need to try and start the bike. We're gonna have to empty out the fuel, put some fresh gas in there, and put a fresh battery in this thing. This thing hasn't run in two years, so that battery is junk. Uh, I picked up a fresh battery already, have it all charged up, just need to throw it in, and then we'll take the tank off, empty it, and I have some fresh gas. We'll see how bad the uh, carbs are leaking, and maybe we can just get it to at least idle for a second before uh, we piss gas all over the place. So to pop the rear seat off, there's two tabs on either side. Just pull back, and the seat comes right out. Now for this tank, 12 millimeter bolt. side covers off. Be very careful not to snap the plastic on them. They are 40 years old. And these side covers for this are kind of bare to find. Now, unfortunately, somebody painted over them. Uh, the good news is they painted over the original graphics as well. You can actually see in here the lines, you can even make out where the hawk would be. I don't know what condition these are going to be underneath. I'm going to attempt to take this paint off. I really don't know if it's going to work or not, but it's absolutely worth a shot. Now, this one does have one of the tabs snapped off of it already. There's still two on there, so that should be plenty good. Here is our new battery for this. It's gonna slide right into here. Get the nut into place on the back. For whatever reason, a lot of these do use a number three Phillips. go. What's holding it out? Fairly tight. Uh, these nice right angle needle nose. Get right around there. And boom. On to the other side. Okay, let's see if we power up. Alright, let's see if this powers up. 
don't see any dash lights, but negative. We've got an issue. Hmm. Wonder what that could be. All right, let's go back through it and make sure we didn't miss anything. So I found the issue. I uh, tracked down the fuse box. This uses the old glass style fuses and the 15 amp main is so destroyed. It's actually in two pieces. Now, what are the odds that you have glass fuses laying around? Pretty low if you don't have three other 1980s bikes. And I happen to have a spare 15 amp uh, from my CB that's up on the stand. So I'm gonna drop this in place. And now let's see if we have power. Moment of truth, we have power. Neutral lights on, oil lights on, and the blinker is on. Well, that works, that's good to know. In fact, both of them do. Let's see if it'll turn over. Let's turn over. Okay. Oh, everything is very frozen on this. The clutch cable is quite frozen. The choke lever is very frozen. And even the throttle is quite frozen. I don't actually see the car that's leaking anything currently. Let's track down this cable, this choke cable, and see if we can't activate it manually. These are CV carbs. I don't actually see anything leaking though. Fuel line is very dry rotted. No fuel's running out though, which is uh, good. Let's check that air filter box and make sure that there isn't any critters building nests before I suck it all into the engine. Definitely some mice activity. However, the airbox itself is quite clean. Quite clean, actually. Has these nice metal grates on it. That actually kept the mice out. Very oily. Original filter has seen better days. All right, let's switch that gas out. And then worst comes to worst, there's a little starting fluid that we could drop in there. Well, as expected, that gas was pretty terrible, uh, but we're all cleaned out. We've got some fresh gas here. I know it's a blue can, but I swear it's gas. Gonna throw. Uh, have you noticed that all the new gas cans leak, no matter what? And they charge you at an exorbitant rate for them. It's like a $30 gas can. And they leak. All right, that should be more than enough. Don't see any leakage. I did test the petcock when I had the tank off. 
runs fine on reserve and also just on in general. All right. Still no leakage. Let me just get this clutch cable. Oh, I said that clutch. This choke cable loosened up. Let's see if we can't get some WD-40 down there. Maybe loosen up that choke lever. starting fluid on me right now. I'll have to run out and grab some. We'll see if we can't spray a little in there. It's possible that the carbs are completely gummed up and they just gotta come off. I was hoping it would kick over. You know, it's just some bad gas. But... The carbs are dry, which makes me wonder if they're not getting fuel at all. If they're just, uh, Jets are just completely stopped up with gunk and corrosion, which means probably won't get it running today if that's the issue. Uh, take the carbs apart, rebuild them. They are CV carbs. I haven't personally done CV carbs before, uh, but can't imagine they're too terribly difficult to clean. I found some carbon choke cleaner. I'm going to just spray that in the air box and see if I can't get it to kick over at least and make sure that there isn't other issues. Spray a little in there. So it fires. It doesn't want to run. But it does kick over. Throw the choke on real quick. That's a win. That's an absolute win right there. So there's definitely an issue with the fueling system. Somewhere in there, I'm guessing the carbs are just absolutely gunked up. Um, so we're gonna take them apart and see what we can do. Clean them all out, rebuild them if we need to. Hoping that they just need a good cleaning and I don't have to completely rebuild them. Um, but we'll find out. We'll go through it, rip it all apart. Thankfully, it's only two carbs. Uh, the old CPs and my gold KZ with, with the four was a handful. So two carbs, not too bad. We'll take it all apart and uh, see if we can stumble upon the issue, correct it, and then go from there. All right, so we cleaned the carbs out. They were absolutely filthy. I didn't film the process. I kept trying to get a good angle on it but uh between looking at my shoulder and also dealing with kids i just couldn't get a good process but it was all gummed up they were filthy uh number two carb wasn't getting any gas which is not terribly surprising but cleaned it all out cleaned out the jets cleaned it all with some carbon choke cleaner and uh was able to to get it all back together and now, it's time to up. too upset about that. Uh, 
clutch is definitely a little funky. I've been trying to get it to loosen up. I don't know if the actual clutch springs are just weak and, and giving out or if it's the cable. Uh, I was messing with it a little bit earlier just to see if I couldn't get it to loosen up, but um, probably gonna have to, to do a clutch on it. Uh, I'm gonna attempt to take it for a ride. Filled the tires, they are not safe. We will not be going fast, but they're holding air apparently. The front brake is definitely a little weak. Um, it's got old fluid in it. Gonna have to bleed out some of that old crappy fluid. Um, shouldn't be too bad, but it's time for the brakes to be done anyway. Uh, you should really switch your brake fluid out every couple years. And I guarantee this one has never been done. That brake fluid's gotta be 30 years old. It's acidic, uh, it's sure it's got moisture in it. So we're gonna flush the whole brake system out on the front end, which is just a simple bleed. Uh, you can really do it by yourself. It's not too hard, it's not like a car. Uh, so pretty easy procedure. We're gonna do that and then one step closer, and then we'll have to tackle that clutch.